Tried M last night and today I feel sad and depressed. Any advice? Um, don't, don't do drugs. This is a, this is a, we've become a drug free zone, okay? Who'd you take drugs with that you want to It's not that, I just, sometimes I, um, um, this is so hard to explain. Or maybe it's not, or maybe it is actually. Actually, never mind. It's impossible to explain because we can't feel what, what we feel with each other. Um, before, if you were a mentally healthy person, before I'd ever done any sort of psychedelic, I had no idea what things like depression or anxiety felt like. I, like, I could talk about them because people could tell me their experiences and then I could like say the same, but I had no idea what those, I didn't like truly know. Um, that's my kill. Um, I didn't truly know like what they felt like, but now I feel like I kind of wonder if those states of mind like depression or anything I wonder if if you felt them once you have a higher proclivity for like feeling them again and Like sometimes it happens and I it's like the worst It is the worst possible feeling in the world. There is like if this is like the circle of all of human experience Mental illness is like an expanded arena that like normal people just don't feel you just don't ever have these things and it's just a very weird, horrible thing to experience. And I don't know. I don't know if like doing certain drugs can unlock that other level of like mentally ill thought or something. But um, yeah, I don't know. So I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> just stay, just stay away from him. Lucian mid. What a fucking loser. Do you think your experience in recent years, everyone being out to get you, has more to do with it? I, dude, I don't know. I don't know anything about what <laughs> exists inside of me anymore. I have no idea, dude. Who knows? That's why we're just on the rift. So when are you going full blink now and do your own druggy convention? Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Is the media company thing happening? Nothing is happening in my life right now. Give me like a week and I'll see where I'm at. It ghosted at least. Whatever. At least put on some music gravy gnome, where I'll start singing. And we all know nobody wants that. Hello. Hey, what's up? Not much. What about you? Not much. Not much. Nice. For Sunday. Um, should I turn my camera on? Um, you know, if you want to, it's up to you. Also, I'm live. Don't say anything. <laughs> yeah, no problem. How's the audio, too? Sounds great. Okay, sweet. So, yeah, I was watching the live stream you did last week, was it? With the other guy? Yeah. Yeah, and I was just, um... It's not like anything he said anything wrong. It was kind of just like he didn't explain things very well. And then it was just like a little bit of misinformation. Just because like schizophrenia. So I have schizoaffective disorder, which is a lot of people might not know about it because it's not very commonly talked about. But it's when you have all those symptoms of schizophrenia along with a mood disorder as well. So for me, I have the bipolar type. There's also the depressive type. Gotcha. And... Um, but I think the main focus I want to talk about is schizophrenia because that's the one I think is like really not well known. I mean, I think bipolar is like people kind of understand it at least <laughs> a little bit more than schizophrenia. Sure. So the first question I wanted to ask you is like, what's your like, have you had like any experiences with someone who's like severely mental ill, like in person? I know you talk about like having emails with them and stuff. Um, in person one time, maybe, but I, it was really hard to tell. I, I wasn't sure, but, um, yeah. not, not, there was just one conversation with a guy that was kind of, but it's a long story, but, um, yeah, but otherwise, no, not, not much. Yeah. And then I think I heard, uh, you guys talk a little bit about your understanding of schizophrenia, but has anything changed since the last time you've talked about it? Um, not too much. I don't think no. Okay, so I just thought I would start with like a brief overview and I don't want to stay on it for too long because it can be boring for a lot of people. Yeah, you're fine. But um, schizophrenia is basically like has three categories of symptoms. It has positive symptoms and positive symptoms mean in addition to your human experience that other people don't. Mm -hmm. And then a negative symptom is the inverse where you don't experience what other people do. So a positive pollution... Um, Positive symptoms would be like delusions, hallucinations, and like psychosis, being out of touch with reality. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the negative symptoms, there's five A's. They have like these words that I can't pronounce very well, but it's like um, 
flattening effect of your face like no not my, many yeah. facial expressions like poverty of speech not no desire to do anything no interest lack of joy kind of similar to what people experience with depression in a way okay and then you have the cognitive symptoms and that's like memory issues um you have the uh, um difficult understanding new information more just in a way kind of similar to adhd kind of sure. if that makes sense yeah so um and I did want to mention, so I saw the other guy was talking about, what's that guy's name? Schizophrenic Hippie? Is that what his name is? Fuck, I don't remember the last guy that I chatted with. Or no, or he was talking about the guy with the YouTube videos. That guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What about him? Yeah, I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, I have a, a very small YouTube channel um, just to try to, you know, kind of talk about these things and focus on how society like sees these things. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, have a good friend who also makes YouTube videos, he's schizophrenic, and I've talked to other people. And what I've found is like, the, and this is like true, like um, when they do studies on it, is like, usually the older you get, the less severe your positive symptoms become. Yeah, I've heard this. And yeah. you have more insight into that you're having them. So it's like, it's, you know, like I said, like he said, I, I'm not accusing the guy of not being schizophrenic. I might accuse him of like playing it up a little for the camera because usually if you if you're on your medication and you're, you know, coherent enough that, you know, you have a mental illness mm -hmm. when you have a hallucination in that state of mind, when you're not in psychosis, as like you can have hallucinations and delusions without being in a psychotic episode. OK, so um, if he wasn't in a psychotic episode, I can't imagine seeing a hallucination, being cognitively aware that you have a rare mental illness, brain disorder, and crying at the hallucination because you should, most people would be aware of the fact that, that that's a hallucination because it's, you logically kind of put it together in your head. Like A, I have schizophrenia, B, I don't believe in ghosts or whatever, and C, like, um, I've seen ghosts before and I weren't there, you know? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes perfect sense. You're saying that as you get older with time, you kind of learn how to tell like what's a hallucination and what's not. And that if you're having a hallucination outside of like a psychotic episode, you would see it, you'd maybe be like a little bit irked, but you would understand it's not real. And then you just kind of move on. But like having a huge mm -hmm. emotionally dysfunctional like reaction to it is probably only gonna happen inside of a psychotic state. Mm -hmm, exactly mm -hmm. and uh, another thing like so there was a while back I made some videos I took them down because it, it it's hard when you you know experience mental illness every day of your life but Anthony Padilla made like a video where he was talking do you know who Anthony Padilla is I don't know who's that he's like you know a guy from Smosh he does like interviews now Fuck, like I don't, but I don't know anybody I don't watch anything so but anyways yeah. he was doing interviews with like schizophrenics and um Oh, oh wait, is he the guy that does the channel where he interviews people with different mental illnesses? Yeah. Oh, then yeah. I think I might have seen him. But I had such a big problem with that, <laughs> those lines of videos. It was hard because I was trying to react to them, but it was difficult because you ended up just kind of critiquing the people telling their story. And so I thought it was wrong. To write it down, but sure. Okay, okay never mind. I'm thinking of a guy that does like special books or something. That's the special books guy. Never mind. Sorry. Oh, okay. that guy's super nice. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Guy. That's yeah. That's who I'd seen. But okay. Gotcha. Yeah. He's a sweet guy. Mm -hmm. um, but they never at any point talked about how medication works for people with schizophrenia or mm -hmm. any treatment. They only talked about, like, the frustrating part for a lot of people I've talked to is that people only talk about hallucinations and delusions and psychosis. Yeah, that's so. The last guy that I talked to, that's something that I hadn't really considered before. Um, but the last guy that I talked to that was on here, the one that you listened to, the thing that he was emphasizing more and more was that the negative symptoms were, like, way, way, way worse than anything else, or at the very least, they like also amplified the fuck out of everything else, which I hadn't really considered before, like the, the memory problems and then especially the sleep thing he emphasized a lot too. Yes, yeah, sleep can be really, really annoying, but, and I, I do want to talk about that because it is pretty interesting, but um, with medications nowadays, well, ever since they came out with antipsychotics, that was one of the big reasons that mental hospitals closed down in the first place was because there was like a viable treatment for schizophrenia. And like, I forget the percent, it was a large percent percent of hospitals were filled with like patient patients with schizophrenia mm -hmm. they work really well for positive symptoms but they don't do anything for negative symptoms very rarely will they help with the negative symptoms at all are you talking about the medication 
Mm-hmm. Okay, medication. gotcha, gotcha, okay. But um, there's this stereotype that schizophrenics always stop taking their medication. And um, I don't think people really grasp how difficult of a decision it is to keep taking your medication. And as a disclaimer, I think everyone should stay on their medication and listen to their doctor. I'm not a doctor. Mm -hmm. And I, I read a lot about it and I try to read many studies, but I still listen to my doctor. I still, you know, follow the rules and it works out really, really well for me. Mm -hmm. um, but they have such like life changing side effects. Like, and it's like, <laughs> I mean, I've talked to people who have depression and then they're like, oh, I stopped taking my antidepressants because I couldn't get off, like couldn't get a boner anymore. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. well, now I'm stuck on these medications that made me gain 60 pounds in a year, give me permanent movement disorders, completely change my hormones so I can't get pregnant. But I mm -hmm. have, you, do you see how that's frustrating? Yeah, I'm, I've known a lot of people that have like, have done like the SSRI train, kind of like trying to find different medications. Um, sometimes antipsychotics are even prescribed for things like OCD and whatnot. So I'm familiar with people that have like tried these drugs and the side effects that come with them, yeah. Or like I like I knew one girl that like she could get horny and she could orgasm, but it would take like three hours literally together. Just like a whole bunch of like weird side effects like that could affect people. Or the weight gain one is a really big one where somebody will get on a certain type of either antipsychotic or SSRI and then they'll gain like fifty pounds and it'll be like horrible, you know? Yeah, I'd say the worst of all is the movement disorders. I haven't heard so, that at all before. Yeah, what do you mean by that? Oh, it's definitely the completely the worst. So okay. it's um uh let me know if I'm boring anyone but no, basically there's a lot of evidence coming out that schizophrenia is more of a brain disorder or a neurological disorder than a mental illness but we still kind of categorize it as a mental illness since it has a lot of psychological features mm -hmm. but basically there's the the dopamine hypothesis it's the most popular belief so basically they think there's too much dopamine somewhere in the brain mm -hmm. they think the prefrontal cortex mainly and this can be seen pretty clearly through patients like who have Parkinson's, right? So um, there's this uh, doctor, I used to read his books all the time, named Oliver Sacks. And um, he, you know, was working with patients with Parkinson's and all these movement disorders. And he found that when he gave them L-Dopa, which raised their dopamine, that it was cured, like their movement problems were cured. Okay. But when they gave them too much L-Dopa, they completely mimicked psychosis completely so that's one side of the theory the other side of the theory is antipsychotics lower the dopamine in your brain they block the dopamine receptors that's all they do really mm -hmm. i mean like the newer generations mess with some other um neurotransmitters but mainly it the biggest thing is it lowers the amount of dopamine in your brain so if you can kind of put it together once you start depleting the dopamine in your brain, your hallucinations and delusions will go away because that's what's causing it. But in the part of your brain where movement is really, really um, caused by dopamine, like dopamine aids in movement, gotcha. um, you start mimicking those disorders as well. So you can have like, you can show up as Parkinson's. There's something called akathisia. So akathisia is like, have you ever had like restless leg syndrome? I don't like my legs. Like I like move my leg a lot, but as like a habit, no, I don't think I've ever had restless leg syndrome. No, because it's more than that, so, right? Yeah, and akathisia is like a step above that. So it's mm. like this feeling in your limbs mainly, where it just feels almost kind of like it's hard to explain to a lot of people, but it's like almost like electric currents, like really, really, really horribly uncomfortable. And the only thing that relieves that feeling is moving around. So like I mean, some oh, days. Yeah. I there's like one day I was at work and I, I put in 16,000 steps just pacing around the office because it, it was so bad in my legs. Like it's just the most uncomfortable feeling. Mm -hmm. It can cause people so much anxiety that they kill themselves over the akathisia, not the illness itself. Mm -hmm. And and then there's tardive dyskinesia, which I had a really big problem with because my tongue would flick in my mouth like really, really fast all day. Just And I had no control over it. It was completely just the muscle just spasming on my tongue all day long. Mm -hmm. And that's just like, oh, like the scariest things and why I think the movement disorders are the toughest thing to get over is because they're permanent. Like weight loss, you know, you can get off the meds, you can do the diet, like, because at the end of the day, it's calories in and calories out for the main part. But when you have these movement disorders, if you're on antipsychotics for like 10, 20 years, mm -hmm. even if you stop them and discontinue it, you could still permanently have those movement disorders. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. 
Um, is that and that, that's not caused by the schizophrenia? That's caused by the medication. Yeah, it's caused by the antipsychotics lowering the dopamine in the part. Because when it lowers the dopamine, it doesn't just lower the dopamine in your prefrontal cortex. It lowers the dopamine in your entire brain. So it's affecting the movement. Yeah, I got you. Um, one of the so, things that I, um, I'll just say this here for people listening. Um, one thing that's kind of annoying is people will talk about like dopamine is like the reward like chemical or like serotonin is like the happiness neurochemical or neurotransmitter. But uh, my understanding is that like these neurotransmitters, all of these are available or um, they're, they're involved in tons of different functions in the body. Like serotonin is like, there's like over hundred things that it like regulates and controls and everything. So it's not just like one chemical that you need to increase or decrease and then it fixes problems or it gets rid of everything, right? Yeah, for sure. And then the the worst part was years ago before they figured out why people were having schizophrenics were having these movement problems, they did think it was the schizophrenia. So instead of discontinuing the medication, they'd actually raise the medication, making it much, much worse. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, when it comes from medication, um, it's really important. It's important to me. I'm uh, going to say, I do want to talk about the medications I take, but every medication works differently for every person, and everyone needs a different dose. Mm -hmm. And I think a big problem that schizophrenics come across is doctors aren't really open with the side effects you'll experience. I don't know why, at least mine. As didn't explain that these things could be permanent or these things happen or any of it, it just started happening to me. Mm -hmm. So it's good to read up on those things. And also if you're experiencing something that's abnormal, um, even if it's not related to antipsychotics, it's probably a good thing to bring it up to your doctor because they might know and it might actually be a side effect. So I take 80 milligrams of Latuda, two milligrams of Risperidone. So those are two antipsychotics. And then I take 125 milligrams of Lamotrigine which is a mood stabilizer. And then I take benzotropine to deal with, so I have a prescription just to deal with the movement issues caused by the antipsychotic. Gotcha. They're usually prescribed to people with Parkinson's. And then I have to take birth control uh, just to regulate my hormones because antipsychotics also really um, mess with your prolactin levels, which can affect the other hormone levels in your system. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, with your stuff, how it's set up now, are, are you like pretty, did you did, did I misunderstand earlier? Did you say there's not really medication you can take for the negative symptoms? Right, but I've never. So for me, it has negative symptoms actually sometimes get worse as you age. But um, for me, I also have and it doesn't work for most people. I don't know why it works. Everyone's brain chemistry is just different. I also have an Adderall prescription and that and I wish everyone was schizophrenic could take it because it really helps with the negative symptoms, like a ton, mm -hmm. uh, a lot. But it's it's obviously raises the dopamine in your brain. It's just pretty much as simple as that. Anything that raises your dopamine in your brain can really um, offset and cause a psychotic episode. But for some reason it works for me, so that helps a lot. But as I grow older, it's just like I enjoy things a lot less. <laughs> like it's very hard. Like you go on walks all the time and stuff, and now when i look at nature it's just like blah you know it's just like everything's blah all the time eating yeah. food blah you know you have to do all these things um i don't you know for me so i did want to ask you this you know um mr girl and the whole dr k situation yeah uh you know how you know max will be all like uh t his opinion on suicide is, is just as bad as like murder and rape right that suicide is just as bad as murder and rape um okay What's your opinion on that? Um, on whether or not it's as bad or, as murder or rape? No, just mostly like, hmm. Yeah, maybe. It just kind of like how how you, do you think it affects us? Like, do you think it should be frowned upon or? Um, that's a really, like really, really hard question. <laughs> Uh, I mean, in a perfect world, I don't think, I think suicide should only be done by people that are approaching end of life and have like no more medical alternatives to alleviate suffering, right? I think that's mm -hmm. a very appropriate time for, for suicide. Um, I would hope that for anybody that hasn't met that threshold or those conditions, that there are other alternatives available such that a person shouldn't have to commit suicide to escape, you know, whatever suffering they have. Yeah, because I, you know, have definitely had a lot. So I started my emails, I'm very high functioning, which I definitely am. But when I'm having a pretty bad episode, things do get really rough. And when the negative symptoms are really bad, they get really rough. Yeah. So, but 
even if it's not like 100 percent true i do like to think that it's as bad as mur murder and rape because it destroys your family and even if that's not necessarily true i like to keep it in my head because then it motivates me in a way like if you realize there's you got kind of have to live through life right <laughs> and you need money to live through life so you have to work a job mm -hmm. and then you have your family so you have to take care of yourself it's almost like uh it's that kind of mindset almost forces people who have mental illness to be like i got to get off my ass because you have to live through it anyways and that's kind of the way i cope with negative symptoms does that make sense yeah i mean if that helps then i mean that's valid <laughs> i mean yeah i, I can't <laughs> yeah. argue it. yeah sure yeah i'm just like okay i have to do these things because mm -hmm. you kind of form and it's like whatever uh deck of cards you know you get mm -hmm. hand of cards you get in life and you kind of have to work with it yeah so but the negative symptoms when it when it gets bad it's like i don't do my dishes for like three weeks and stuff like that i'm just kind of like laying laying around a lot and stuff so mm -hmm. um it's pretty difficult like i lived by myself for like about six months moving back into my family's now because i got really really depressed and i was like okay i know that that's not good mm -hmm. so i have to be with people who can help me out because you know no matter how high functioning you are it's a pretty severe illness so there are times where you're just disabled and sometimes you're disabled from the medication because they make you tired as hell because um, they used to be classified as major tranquilizers, actually, because they just knock you out. Mm -hmm. But um, when you... it comes to like, what? I was going to ask a question, but you can finish this. No, no, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask, like, um, when you're having like big depressive episodes and stuff, like what are the things that people can do that help you? Um, For me, it's just being surrounded by the people who love me mm -hmm. um, helps a lot, you know? Um, my family, like, you know, they can help me with the physical stuff, like helping me with my dishes and stuff and little things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but they also help me in the emotional sense of when I, I mean, I've just learned with time that being alone when you're depressed is probably the worst thing you can do to yourself really. It's for very, sure. yeah. So, I mean, so I went to therapy first time when I was 12. I was put on antidepressants when I was 13. You went so to, wait, I what was the thing you just said? You went to therapy for what? When I was 12. When you were 12, I was 12, really I guess depressed. I gotcha, gotcha, yeah. jeez, okay. Do you think that, and I was, when you were 12, do you think that that was part of like, um, or when did you first start experiencing stuff related to schizophrenia? So yeah, so there's a prodromal system, uh, not system, prodromal symptoms. So before your first psychotic episode, you'll have the prodromal sy symptoms. And that will be, and I experience this very heavily, like it's just when it seems, it looks like on the outside, like a very, very bad case of depression mm -hmm. where you lay around a lot, you get really depressed, you start so socially isolating very heavily. And it, it was around the age of 12 where that kind of started for me. So I started like, it's a joke now in my family, but they, I guess they used to always go behind my back and everyone would say like, doesn't Anna lay down more than anyone you've ever met? Like they never thought anything was off about it, but uh, severe social isolation. I would just get home, I'd uh, play some music and lay in bed and just kind of sleep all the time. But mm -hmm. I've been experiencing hallucinations since, you know, since very early childhood. Very rarely though, it wasn't like a constant thing. I, I would just hallucinate here and there because um, unlike other mental illnesses, Schizophrenia is not something you can get over with therapy. You kind of need medication and things like that. Sure. And there's actually genetic um, precursors that they've found. Like there's. Mm -hmm. I've heard it's um, like a super heritable. Like if you've got like an uncle or an aunt, it like dramatically increases the chance mm -hmm. of you developing it. Yeah. yeah, it runs my family. I think in t um, identical twins, it's like 30 to 50% chance the other twin mm -hmm. will have schizophrenia. So it's very, very heritable because there's actual genes that they've only found in people who develop schizophrenia so mm -hmm. it's, it's actually like there's no G, like ptsd gene yeah, yeah, yeah you know it's that's why i like to think of it more as a brain disorder than a mental illness because the, your brain is actually shaped differently like you're mm -hmm. been, like 80 percent people who you know have schizophrenia when they autopsy then they have bigger ventricles in their brain and less uh white matter i think in their brain as well gotcha so it's it's a uh, a lot of people don't know that kind of stuff. So, someone in yeah. chat just asked, "What's the difference between a brain disorder and a mental illness?" 
Um, so mental illnesses are typically things that through some combination of, or one or the other, either therapy or medication, eventually, hopefully you can get over. So like somebody might be able to say like, I had PTSD, I don't have it anymore. I had depression, I don't have it anymore. I had anxiety, I don't have it anymore. But for like schizophrenia, um, it's a bit more of like a, like a brain, like a physiological thing. Cause you never like are over your schizophrenia. Like there's not like a point in time where you're like, oh, like I had schizophrenia when I was younger and I cured it. I mean, there's chances it'll go into remission, but that's mostly for positive symptoms. You're usually stuck with the negatives for the rest of your life. And mm -hmm. it's uh, it's more like if you want to think of other brain disorders, it'd be like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and sure. dementia. You know, there's something um, abnormal about your brain. It's like a neurological disorder, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, Do you take anything to like help you sleep or anything like melatonin or? Heart or tranquilizer. Oh or no, the antipsychotics, the uh, risperidone, <laughs> could probably knock out like a horse. Honestly, oh, okay, they, yeah. they make you, yeah, they knock you out for really hard. But um, that's now we can get on the topic of sleep. Yeah, I I was hoping to articulate like how difficult the sleeping thing could be, mm -hmm. uh, because well, mine's like kind of different because I also have bipolar too, so that really heavily affects your sleep as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean. I go through pretty much phases and it, it doesn't seem like I get much of a break from it. It's a little annoying, honestly. We've tried like everything, but I'll go like two or three months where I sleep 12 to 16 hours a day, mm -hmm. just exhausted all day long. And then I'll go two to three months where I'm sleeping maybe three hours every night, um, maybe. I mean, the longest I've gone without sleep is four days. Jones. And in those... Yeah, in those times, like the last manic episode I had, I was the I was up for those four days, and I'd be put on 100 milligrams of Latuda and 15 milligrams of Zyprexa, which is really high doses for both of them. That's when the tongue started flicking my mouth because of the mm -hmm. movement disorder problem. So, um, it, and then I was like 60 pounds heavier, so it was real, and I was working from home, so it was really freaking tough because I knew I looked. Like, and weird mm -hmm. overweight and like just it was it was just a mess do you mind saying medication. do you um do you disclose your age or yeah no that's fine i'm 23 i'm turning 24 next month gotcha gotcha okay <laughs> um <laughs> gotcha well is there anything else you want to go over or yeah i just wanted to quickly um go over the the issues i have like with the way society kind of goes, you know? Yeah, sure. Like talking about looking at mental. Yeah, talking about mental illness in general. It's just like a little frustrating because like it is a very complex disorder and it's very hard to understand and I understand that. Mm -hmm. But um, it also seems like we don't as a society really care at all because like the amount of ho homeless people that are schizophrenic, I think it's up to like 20% of the homeless population is schizophrenic mm -hmm. and like everyone's like worried about the violent schizophrenic but um schizophrenics are 14 times more likely to be a victim of a violent crime than perpetrate a violent crime sure i mean i've gone through life with like having friends that i thought were really close and you tell them that you have like anything that has the word schizo in it right mm -hmm. <laughs> and their whole perception of you change they act like they're walking on eggshells all the time and i hate that because i just want to be treated like every single other person now granted there are a lot of schizophrenics who you know have a very hard time um blending into society but it's just like hearing the name of the disorder itself just kind of completely changes mm -hmm. your perception of a person and that's annoying um do you think um is there anything when people are dealing with you that they need to know that's helpful to avoid i guess like triggering anything or um, as long as you don't let me smoke too much weed or anything like that, I should be fine. I'm actually very, very, um, hard to upset, pretty much. Like, mm -hmm. I'm very, like, my coworker makes jokes about, it, like, you look like you got hit in the face with a shovel last night because I just look tired and stuff. Like, it's really hard mm -hmm. to upset me in that kind of way, really. I mean, if you go on and on and on about conspiracy theories for too long, I might start getting a little paranoid mm -hmm. just because, you, you know, you just, I, I think that's kind of for anyone, though, like. If you get too much into conspiracy theories, people kind of, you know, yeah, get maybe, yeah. into, yeah. Do, and um, then, I was going to ask, do you, do you smoke weed? 
I used to all the time. I um, don't anymore just because it makes me so anxious. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah, that was the other thing I wanted to touch on because you were asking the guy what it's the difference between like taking psychedelics is mm-hmm. versus like hallucinating um, mm-hmm. normally, mm-hmm. if you can say that. <laughs> um, hallucinating both <laughs> drugs, yeah. Yeah. So there's, I would say, have you done shrooms and acid? Yeah. Yeah. So I would say it's more like acid than shrooms. I would say actually it's when I'm trying to explain what a psychosis feels like to someone, which I did in my email a little, mm-hmm. I do like to say it's like if you took a ton of acid, it's like a bad acid trip basically with the lack, not as much euphoria kind mm-hmm. of. Gotcha. Um, seeing stuff like that. So that's my personal opinion because I have have tried those things as well. And I don't know if my um, opinion is swayed by actually already experiencing hallucinations my whole life. I don't know if schizophrenia trip trip differently, but I would say that's a pretty good um, indicate like feeling, like mm-hmm. explaining that feeling. It's kind of like a lot of LSD, bad trip. Gotcha, gotcha. Um... Mm-hmm. And then the last thing, the last thing I wanted to say was that. Um, yeah um i think like people are very good at being sensitive around mental illnesses that they can understand and i know you've talked about it a couple times like people don't really understand depression unless they've had depression and things like that mm-hmm. but i would say more generally people know what like to feel sad so they can put their like they can put themselves in that shoe a little bit mm-hmm. but when you're trying to explain a break with reality and like hallucinations and having no motivation to do anything i think it's very difficult for people to grasp so when they're trying to be very accepting of all of these other um mental health problems it's i think it's easier for them because i know these people and i know i've talked to many of these people and they see a homeless person like screaming at someone on the street Mm -hmm. and they're not like oh be nicer to them you know Mm -hmm. so that's usually my biggest gripe although that's probably that might have more um to do with uh, just like stigma against homeless people rather than maybe mental illness but yeah yeah it's pretty fucked up mm-hmm. yeah i think that's pretty much everything i wanted to go over gotcha gotcha um hmm. yeah if you have any questions or anyone has any questions i don't mind <clears throat> no i don't think so for you so for you you don't really worry about the positive symptoms much they don't bother you or it's not like a big deal or um yeah no it doesn't bother me at all for most of the part ever since i started medication the only things i see are just like uh, dots flying around you know um things moving sometimes it's annoying when i'm trying to work because i work a full-time job Mm -hmm. and i'm trying to read the computer screen and everything's moving like that's annoying but it's not like i'm disabled because of that is it only like visual stuff or um i used to get a lot more auditory Uh, When I was younger, I would get a lot of auditory, which was more common, Mm -hmm. chattering. I would hear music. I would um, hear just, uh, like, it sounds like you're in a cafeteria full of people, but you're, like, in your car at night, kind of. Yeah, interesting. That's what the last guy explained it as that. And usually when we think of auditory Mm -hmm. stuff, it's, like, a voice saying something to you. But, yeah, he mentioned it was just, like, chatter, yeah. Yeah, that's why I get so frustrated with those interviews with schizophrenics, because, like, that was like the whole concept of my video I made about anthropedia because like, he was only showing like people who were saying very severe symptoms that aren't as common, especially if you're medicated and they weren't. So it almost worsened the stigma because they weren't saying like a lot of people with schizophrenia, you wouldn't even know there was anything wrong with them in the first place. Mm-hmm. So it'd be like um, talking about autism and only showing videos of like very low functioning autistic people that are like rolling around the room screaming and being like, this is what yeah, autism is. Exactly. Like. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Yeah, it was, it's super frustrating. Um, Do you ever, for just one question, I guess, um, because it, I don't know if this is fair to say or if this makes sense at all, but it feels like when, when we talk about like hallucinations um, or maybe when we talk about like psychosis, do you, like in one sense, you have kind of like you see or hear things like that's a thing but then in another sense there's kind of like an underlying mood of like a feeling of something do you think that those are like two different things or do you only get like the hallucinations like you see something does that make sense what oh, i'm asking you or feel you're... something's presence there not not like you feel something's presence but like a feeling of like um 
of maybe like a really paranoid feeling that like somebody is after you or knows something about you or that things aren't quite right or something like that like are any of those types of underlying feelings things that schizophrenics get or is it generally like your mood and your vibe and everything is pretty stable and then you just kind of like see or hear things depends if you're medicated or not medicated so basically i would say um when you are medicated and you're in a more stable frame of mind you can separate delusions from hallucinations so hallucinations can be benign mm -hmm. and even if their voice is talking to you they should be complete like they're two completely different symptoms like they often correlate, but that doesn't mean they have to correlate. In fact, like if you look at the DSM, you don't have to hallucinate um, or have delusions to have schizophrenia. You need like one or the other, but you don't have to be delusional like to have schizophrenia and you don't have to have hallucinations to have schizophrenia. So mm -hmm. you just need like, I think two out of five. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. So okay. I, mean, I was curious because there's some people that I talk to and it's not so much the like that they're seeing or hearing things is that they'll have like ideas that are like very big about like being angels or part of like a grander plan or stuff like that. And it's not like I can point to like, oh, they hallucinated that sort of stuff, but it's more just like these kind of like inner, inner feelings that they have. Yeah. Yeah. Their thoughts, like mm -hmm. they're basically a delusion is a fixed belief that can't be changed with any facts that bring, yeah. uh, come to the surface. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. All right. I was just curious. You don't have that as much. It's just, uh, before I was medicated, honestly, like I'm on a pretty heavy dose of stuff, so mm -hmm. I don't have hallucinations or delusions very much uh, anymore at all. Okay. I'll have episodes here and there, but very rare. Gotcha, gotcha. And then you said you work like a normal job and everything now? Yeah, I work as a production schedule scheduler at a medical systems company, and um, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, there are weeks where, when you get into depressive states where it's very, very hard to do your work, mm -hmm. um, which... I, yeah, so I worked a full time job. I got disability at the job, but that was the other thing is like, even your therapists and doctors don't want you to tell your workplace or people you know that you have schizophrenia. Like, they want you to be careful with sharing that information just because they know that it can really, um, they'll, I get the impression they think they'll try to get rid of you because it's, it's very much a burden to a lot in a lot of people's minds. Mm -hmm. when, when you're just curious, when you're having like depressive episodes and it's hard to work, what do you, is there a way or what do you do to motivate yourself to, to work through that? Well, um, it's very, very difficult to motivate myself to get through those. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say I do still work. I never take big times off of work. I've never been hospitalized or anything. Mm -hmm. So I've consistently worked since I was like 16 years old. I've always worked a job. Mm -hmm. Um, but during those depressive times, I, uh, do a lot less work, but I, um, you know, forcing myself to go to the office and just knowing, well, I like where I sit, there's like a bunch of people who constantly have questions for me and stuff and about like how production's running and stuff. So mm -hmm. to a degree, I think a lot of the reasons I'm good at overcoming those things is because I really, really like helping people with stuff. And I really don't want to leave people hanging. It's just kind of a principle of mine. So I just kick my butt and try to, I drink like four Red Bulls basically. Gotcha. Drink a lot of Red Bull. That helps too. I think it's like a hard pill to swallow, but it's almost like when you have to go work out after two years of not working out, it's kind of like that when you have a depressive episode, mm -hmm. you don't want to do it. You don't want to get out of bed. It sounds like the worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. It's hard to focus, but you just get out of your bed. You force yourself to do it. And that's, that's the, best advice i mean i think when i tell people what to do i especially if they're really really depressed i would tell them to start with like really small things because this is kind of how i learned how to do it over the years mm -hmm. so because when i used to be depressed i would just stay home from work for a long time but i started with like forcing myself to shower every day i have good hygiene the last schizophrenics have very poor hygiene due to the, their negative symptoms mm -hmm. so i started showering every day and working up and then i started cooking for myself every day and like forcing myself to do that. Just like, it helped when I moved out cause there was, I couldn't afford rent and to order food all the time. Mm -hmm. So to eat, I would have to, I would have to um, make my own food. So then I started to make my own food and then you have to do your dishes. And then, and then just slowly one at a time, just start adding more tasks to your plate. Mm -hmm. And over time, the, the smaller ones will come easier and then you can start getting to the bigger ones if that makes sense. Gotcha. Are there any, um, are there like psychoactive compounds? So I think like caffeine counts as one that you have to avoid because they can act on your um, symptoms or because you, you mentioned Red Bull. And then I know you're, it looks like you're vaping now for that like nicotine helps people with schizoaffective or schizophrenic stuff. 
Uh, is there any, are there any like dietary choices you make that help you with things or? Yeah, so a big thing is like when I get into a depressive episode, especially, that's mm -hmm. when I'll sleep for the 12 or 16 hours a day, which is too much mm -hmm. sleep. Um, I uh, have to, so I have to take, it's like annoying. So I have to take one med for a GERD in the morning. Then I would usually skip that and just take my Adderall in the morning to get me going. But then it didn't help at all. So because I wasn't eating breakfast at all, because I just felt like I didn't need it because when I was going through a manic, when you go through a manic episode, you don't feel a need to eat or sleep at all. Mm -hmm. Like I lost like 40 pounds, not working out at all. I just had a manic episode. So I lost all the weight because I, I didn't feel hungry ever. Gotcha. And um, so, um, what was the question? Wait, can you go back? Oh, just like, um, yeah, are there like dietary choices that you make that like yes. these types okay. of foods, yeah, enhance yeah. symptoms? So, so now my doctor says like I have to get up and have like a good amount of protein in the morning, like 25 grams of protein first thing in the morning before you take any medication. Um, any medication, you got to take some protein in your stomach. Um, and because it's just like, it's kind of common sense. Now that I think about it, I should have just been eating breakfast and lunch, but... Mm -hmm. Protein is a really big one if you want energy throughout the day. Um, when it comes to vitamins, there are some vitamins that help give you energy. Uh, l, l th I, can't, I don't remember the names of them. There's mm -hmm. vitamins I have to take as well sure. um, and supplements. And it is, it's mostly just to increase the energy levels um, for the negative symptoms. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so for things like the sleep and everything, okay. Do you does mm -hmm. the, do you have big problems with like memory stuff or is that not as big a problem for you? Um, so you know your memory, working memory is usually pretty effective. For me, I can't remember much. When I try to think two years in the past, like that's pretty much gone. Like I have a very hard time. You know, a lot of my problem is like not knowing how people without schizoaffective kind of work. You know, like oh, so it's hard to know like actually... what's normal versus like what's you yeah. and symptoms. Yeah. It gets really difficult because I think like people will talk about their childhood in detail mm -hmm. and they can like picture it in their head. Like I can know facts like um, I lived with my cousin when mm -hmm. I lived in Florida. Like I can remember facts, but I don't remember what it looks like, what it felt like or any of that. Sure. It, I don't know if that's normal. Okay. Yeah, I gotcha. Interesting. Yeah, I guess it's really hard to compare memories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> but I will forget things like um, my surroundings, but that's more of an out of touch reality kind of thing where... I uh, don't recognize um, where I am, even if I've been there a hundred times and then you can get lost and stuff because you just don't recognize anything. Interesting. Are you okay with like stuff like driving or? Yeah, I drive everywhere. I mean, they don't, um, I'm not supposed to drive if I, if I come become like unresponsive and I can't, like at work sometimes like people will be like eh, trying to get my attention i'm just like blankly staring at the wall and like a catatonic state mm -hmm. and in those cases they they know to call my mom and uh have her pick me up sure does that happen pretty often or Is no that, like, um rare? well i worked from home for like two years this is I've been one year at my new job now where i have to go to the office and it's only come up like one or two times okay gotcha gotcha mm -hmm. Do you have any weird things in terms of like, um, like some people talk about like having an inner monologue or like being able to picture things in their head? Like, are you able to do all of that like pretty well or? Well, when I read a book, I can't picture at all what it's trying to describe and it's really frustrating. Like, like you I, can't get an image or you can't even understand like the words and the narrative and the grammatical structure? Uh, the images mostly. I have no idea. Like when it's like, I used to get so annoyed when I was a kid. Uh, cause I'd be reading and I loved reading, mm -hmm. but they spend like two pages describing a chest and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck this looks like. I have no idea what they're trying to, like, I can't picture it at all when I okay, read the words. Gotcha. Like it just doesn't connect for me. Okay. That, I don't think, it seems like there are people that are like that. It's not necessarily like a schizophrenic thing. They're just people that don't have mental images for whatever reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, all right. Well. I'm trying to think, is there anything else you want to go over, or? Um, I don't think so. I mean, pretty much talked about everything I wanted to. Uh, thanks for having me on, though. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem.
Um, if anything ever comes up or if you hear anything or want to talk about anything or related to this or any otherwise, yeah, feel free to shoot me another email yeah. or message on Discord. Yeah, anything. if you ever need some, you know, if you ever get into mental health topics, I, I mean, it's a big part of my life and I, I, think, mm -hmm. I think about it pretty deeply. So if you ever want to chat about that kind of stuff, I, I might be a different perspective. Gotcha. Cool. Um, Actually, hold on. Yeah, I kind of have a question. So it sounds like when I listen to you talk, um, it sounds like you have actually put effort into like reading the actual descriptions of things. Like um, your description of like what a delusion is, is like that's like a dictionary definition, like you know pretty mm -hmm. well, yeah. It seems like there are a lot of people, um, and not to shit talk anybody, I don't, I don't mean like that, but it seems like there are a lot of people mm -hmm. with mental illnesses that don't do much research or know much at all about that. Do you have like an opinion on like, if you're dealing with a mental illness, like do you think those people should make a bigger effort to get informed or does that, did that help you? Or is it like you wouldn't think most people should waste their time or what, how do you feel about that? A hundred percent. I think about that very, a lot because that's why I try like on my YouTube channel to try to educate people a little. It's a little frustrating that your doctor doesn't educate you. Like my doctor never went over basically most of the symptoms of schizophrenia mm -hmm. at all. Um, and I think a lot of people just assume their doctor is giving them the info. Like I wasn't even given a pamphlet or anything. I just, um, cause I, uh, you know, people call me weird growing up my whole childhood, you know, people are like, I think you're like mentally ill. Like my, when I turned 18, my friends like, I think you're schizophrenic and we all, my whole family laughed at that. Jesus. Um, but, Wait, why did they, what but, was, what was their outward indication? I'm curious. That I had schizophrenia? Yeah. Well, cause I was hallucinating. Oh, okay, 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 gotcha. It was, yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, he was right. Like he had a good indication. Cause he, and he also said I smelled really bad, which I'm embarrassed about. Mm -hmm. Not really, I don't really care. But I wasn't having good hygiene, which is a really big symptom. It's like, you, you're really bad at taking care of yourself. He thought he had schizophrenia. So he Googled it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Gotcha, makes sense, gotcha. I know that like the hygiene and stuff yeah. can be an indicator for a lot of like depression and stuff too. When people just suddenly stop taking care of themselves and everything, it can be a big one, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then for me, um i think i always was trying to because like at first like you know um i don't blame anyone in my family but you know my dad's like 100 percent vietnamese he's from vietnam and then my mom grew up in a family that didn't take mental health very seriously at all mm -hmm. i didn't even know it ran in my family um but so i was always i was born in the day and age where i had a phone and stuff and um i once i got my diagnosis I was like, and they, they made it sound serious, but they didn't explain it. I was like, I need to understand these things. So I think it helps you get better because you are, have more insight. You're like, oh, this is not what, this is, sounds exactly like this dictionary definition symptom, mm -hmm. you know? Gotcha, so gotcha. now I know that that's probably that and I should probably go call my doctor because I don't usually do that. When you first got your diagnosis, were you resistant to it? Or were you like, it can't be this or something like this? I imagine because before you know you have it, I'm sure that all the same stigma that society has, you would probably have as well, right? Like, you, Or did you think of schizophrenics as just like crazy people screaming in the street or? You know, like I said, I grew up in a household where they didn't talk about mental illness at all. I was like, oh, so not you just, even. You didn't even have a negative impression. You just had no impression. I had the impression of like, this is the thing that some people, I hear other people experience. Um, it's kind of like you're, you're, you get a sinking feeling like, oh shit. But at the same time, you also, uh, you feel like, if, especially if you've been, had a psychotic episode, you feel like, oh, thank God, now they'll know how to fix it. Because if they didn't know what was wrong, then, um, then I would be stuck in the same situation forever. Mm -hmm. But I also was given an MMPI. I don't know if you know what the MMPI is. No, I don't know. It's uh, one of the two like nation national like um, diagnostic tools that are used like test wise. Oh, is it like an inventory basically um, for checking up yeah. symptoms? Kind of. It's okay, like, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So I took that and it, it indicated that I, it had a couple things I could have, and one of them was schizophrenia. And then mm -hmm. a couple months later, I was dealing with such severe paranoia um, that they were like, you know, you definitely um, have it. So I kind of was given a pre warning to it. Cause I always thought hallucinating was normal my whole life. Like I didn't think twice about it mm -hmm. because it, it, for me, it was never like, I, like I, I don't like saying it too much, but I don't really have that like super severe case where I, I need to be institutionalized or anything. So it's very, it's a spectrum just like how we said, a spectrum just like autism. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the hallucinations I've had, like they never really talked to me and told me to do 
horrible things to the people around me. I've had one voice talk to me once. It was mm -hmm. scary, but like it doesn't happen a lot. Yeah, I got gotcha. So um, I just kind of assumed like I was talking about the friends, like yeah, because the first time I even heard the word hallucination was because I was taking um, psychedelics and someone was like, are you hallucinating? I was like, what does that mm -hmm. mean? <laughs> and then I was like, oh yeah, I do that all the time. And so then, I don't know. It, this, I guess it plays in the role of negative symptoms where you don't feel very strongly towards things. You know, gotcha, you gotcha. Have oh, the blunt effect, I think, is the name, right? Yeah. Talking about, yeah. Like apathy. It's just like, okay, I guess mm -hmm. this is what's going on now. It's gotten depressing at some times. Um, there is one statistic that I always thought was really... I never understood until someone explained it, but there's a statistic that... Okay, so there's schizophrenics who have episode after episode after episode. And there are schizophrenics that go into remission more often, right? Okay. Um, which one do you think has a higher chance of suicide? <sighs> Let's see. I feel like it could go either way. Either the ones that have it more often are more likely to commit suicide because they're dealing with it more often, or the ones that have it less often are more likely to commit suicide because they're not as used to dealing with the symptoms. So I, I could say going close. either way. Yeah, is it? The, th the theory is that, so when you go into remission more, you're more likely to kill yourself, statistics show, because when you're, because then when you're not having an episode, when you're in touch with the reality, when everything's residual, you have a chance to see what your life is like. And sometimes w when you ha are having episodes, so like mm -hmm. you come out of a manic episode, you have no money, you know, you, you've been doing drugs and stuff all this time and then you're out of it and you're like why the fuck did i do all of that stuff like that's not who i am it mm -hmm. almost feels like it's not who i am but you do all this horrible st stuff when you're in the midst of psychosis you come out of it you're like i just want to be normal now i have no money now i feel like my like maybe they fired you at your job because you did xyz maybe you got caught for shoplifting during your episode all these horrible things happen mm -hmm. and then you're like god damn it it's gonna happen again at some point isn't it and it probably will like not to sound depressing i'd I'm not too depressed about it anymore. I've kind of let it go, but mm -hmm. um, that's that's why more people commit suicide when they have more episodes of remission. Gotcha. Are you, um, ha have you heard of any of like the different drug therapies that they're trying with people? Like someone in my chat, I don't know if this guy's schizoaffective, but he just mentioned something about ketamine. Uh, ketamine assisted therapy is something that has helped me with my symptoms. I know ketamine's used for depression. Uh -huh. I haven't heard of its use for schizophrenia. Okay. He might maybe he's talking what... about the depressive side of your since you're schizoaffective, maybe. Mm hmm Yeah. Um, because I don't know what chemicals dopamine raises in your brain, really. Mm -hmm. Um or how it works, because it used to just be a street drug or used for veterinary purposes. Mm hmm mm -hmm. But no, I would say over the years, we've had the first generation antipsychotics and the second generation antipsychotics, and they're supposed to have lower risks of the movement disorders and uh, other symptoms, but not by too much. I think they, you know, I've been on most second generation antipsychotics, almost every single one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the side effects are something that are probably the greatest problem we have to deal with. I mean, clozapine. Clozapine is one of the most successful at treating schizophrenic patients. It pretty much eliminates positive symptoms for almost every, like very treatment resistant people. But the amount of side effects that come with it are um, pretty much, they're almost deadly in a way, so. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well, um, I think I can't think of any other questions. Anything else? No, I, I don't think so, yeah. Um, like again, like I said, thanks again for having me on. Um, mm -hmm. I do think it's important that more people kind of learn about these things and, you know, get some more attention to, you know, help out people who are like disabled due to schizophrenia and have more like social acceptance and see like pe people can definitely coherently have normal conversations or know about these things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people think you're just incomprehensible, yeah. but oh, there's a lot of people like me out there. So um, thank you for. Um, let me have a platform to talk about that. Yeah, of course. Do you want to link your channel or tell people where they can find you? Uh, sure, I can do that. Uh, in the chat, or can I send it to you? Because I don't have that over. You can just tell me, and then my people will link it and everything. Yeah. I think it's just Atypical Anna. I think that's what it's under. Atypical Anna. Yeah, I okay. can just search that up. I should be there. Gotcha. Awesome. Thank you very much. Cool. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate the chat. Yeah, bye. Bye.